Hello my soccer universe for a review of Champions League group stage match day four was a very very interesting uh, match day I have to have to say with two games really sticking out the one being Milan winning against PSG at home and the other one being another horror show of United in Copenhagen yes Copenhagen uh, so that's def that definitely interesting now the other thing is, since I couldn't make a video for match day three, except for the short videos that you can find in the playlist, I wanna at least a little bit mention the results from last time around. However, we will not do a full review on them. I will focus mostly on match day four. And as always, I wanna go a little bit group by group, starting with the Tuesday first, and then we'll go uh, on uh, the Wednesday games. I would say, let's start Tuesday, I want to actually go alphabetically, Group E, uh, where we had Atletico Madrid, complete turn turner from what they had uh, in on match day three, where they had real trouble with Celtic, only a 2-2 draw, yes, in the end they could have won it, but all over it was a really good Celtic performance, this time around is the biggest Atletico Madrid win in the club's history, 6-0. And yes, Griezmann gave them an early goal, but the Maeda red card in the 23rd definitely tilted things towards uh, Atletico Madrid and then it really got ugly especially in second half Morata, Griezmann, Lino, Morata again and then Niguez making it a proper route. The bigger matchup definitely was in the, in the group definitely was uh, Lazio against Feyenoord with Feyenoord having a really good 3-1 win in the first fig fixture probably sure should have been more I mean Lazio barely got the uh, consolation goal in this time around, it was a much more even affair that was decided on, you know, the offside trap for Feyenoord not quite working. So Felipe Anderson can play to Immobile, who runs through a goal in stoppage time of the first half. Overall, I think Lazio just edged this one. Uh, it was a good win for them, an important win for them, because now they are again ahead of Feyenoord, as we will see. But that group is still wide open. Yes, Celtic is uh, out, of, out of it, but between the other three teams, that is, um, I don't want to say a free-for-all, but that, that's definitely a very, very interesting uh, group coming up. And it's not necessarily a foregone conclusion who goes through, I think will probably hinge on whether Celtic can take anything from Lazio or Feyenoord or the other way around whether um, how Feyenoord or Lazio perform against Atletico Madrid I would say and with Atletico also not through definitely interesting one but let's go into the group of death group F uh, so many storylines there Dortmund do the double over Newcastle and the win in Newcastle a 1-0 win was already a very mature performance that came Kind of unexpected, but you saw that there's some maturity in this Dortmund squad, which is weird to say now after they lost against Bayern 4-0. But they showed the same maturity in the home game against Newcastle as well, uh, where they got a fully deserved 2-0 uh, win. Sabitzer being actually instrumental, did it this time scoring, uh, setting a full full crook, and then uh, Julian Brandt is actually running wild. I mean, he, he created a one chance where you thought he already had lost the ball and still gets to it. And then, yeah, he makes a 2-0 after uh, the Yemi assist. But that was really impressive. And this Dortmund team uh, has been much maligned at the beginning of the season. But I think they have a real chance of advancing from this group at this moment, especially with the double over Newcastle. They actually sit at the moment top of the group. And why do they sit top of the group? Because in the big matchup, Milan actually not only score, as I said in my short video, but also grind out a win a fully deserved win although the chances for PSG were there to win it and this was such a reversal from the first fixture where uh, yes Milan tried to play with PSG but were completely a hit on the, on the counter over and over again in the end yeah maybe the three was a little bit too I didn't reflect the balance on the park but it was a little bit of a horror show for Milan especially defensively this time defensively a real team performance that's coming on the back of a really bad performance against Udine where I really feared the worst and I feared the worst even after, in the ninth minute when Skrinja completely unmarked after a corner I mean the corner come, comes in it's a Marquinhos header to Skrinja who acres of space around him and he can make it 1-0 that was an easy one at that point Milan already had created a few chances it was a very open very crazy game for the first 15 minutes or uh, 20, uh, 20, 20 minutes they're going up and down and I think what saved Milan is that they got immediately the equalizer when a Giroud shot got parried by Dollar Roma and Lau bicycle kicks it in 
I have to mention Dollar Roma. Yes, that's how I call him. Um, he got, of course, a very, I don't want to say super nasty, but a hello that kind of befitted his uh, um, outcast status at Milan at, at, at the moment. To be honest, I, I'm glad that, Don, that Dollarumma left and this whole affair, yes, he might have been a Milan product and he, that he's a fan, blah, 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 blah. It, it sounded always hollow because whenever his contract was around, run, run, he was going for more money, more money, more money, more money, more money. And this throwing um, um, dollar bills at, at, at him is not a new thing. Um, on the other hand, all the hatred, a, you know, he kind of won the Euros. That's a small feather in his cap. He did a good job f uh, for Milan. But what's most important is, thanks to his departure, Milan got better because we have Mike Menio, who is a better goalkeeper, which was also shown on the night. I also want to mention uh, the uh, dollar bills. It was thrown at dollar room uh, with uh, the 71, you know, his face and a mercenary, blah, blah, blah. And then the 71, which is Neapolitan, since he's from Southern Italy, Neapolitan code for a man without honor. Uh, so, yeah, that was kind of weird slash maybe a teeny bit funny. Um, but what was even better was the TIFO that the Milan fans put up because the PSG fans actually decided at the first game to put up a devil for target practice. <laughs> and then they put up Keanu Reeves in the Matrix, stop the bullets and showing in French, always Milan. And then show them also, yeah, no, we have seven of the trophies that you badly want to have. But that's all on the side. We are still 1-1 with Milan and PSG. Yes, uh, PSG then hit with Dembélé the crossbar, but Milan created chances and actually dug in. And especially, uh, I knew that the game will turn. When the commentator said, the game is now suddenly not as open anymore, but it gets more physically. Because at that moment I knew, physically, that's the one thing that PSG does, 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 doesn't like. I think having Loftus cheek back in the lineup, having Pulisic back in the lineup, gave the team a whole lot more balance gave them the physicality that, that they needed, and it showed. And it showed especially on the winning goal through Giroud in the 50th minute. There was a pass there where you thought that Leao maybe was fouled. He's lying on, on the floor. Theo Hernandez gets the ball, crosses in, and the whole PSG defense is switched off. And Giroud uh, heads over Milan Skriniar, completely posterizing him. Brilliant header, and it's 2-1. Yes, then PSG had more possession, uh, but honestly, except for one chance from Mbappe in the first half, there was not really much coming from him. They had him squarely in the pocket, and Mbappe is not one that gets in, into the fight and tracks back, and this is exactly what Milan used there. They had the chance, I mean, there was a Theo free kick, I think Okafor, when he, he came out, he probably should, should have made, made a goal. It was a very complete team performance, hanging on, digging in, grinding the result out, and getting yourself back into the Champions League group, where, to be frank, you should have actually won the first two games, because the chances were there. So maybe you can write that wrong in the last two games against the same two opponents, Dortmund and Newcastle. Again, I actually think with a win against Dortmund and if PSG do the job against Newcastle, uh, the trip to um, Newcastle might not be as daunting, but you know, it's always there. But then Milan and Dortmund never match up that well anyway. So uh, a little bit, and the solidity of Dortmund, Dortmund a little bit scares me, to be honest. Okay, uh, in Group G, all is done. Leipzig win, uh, City win. Uh, they both uh, get the double over their respective opponents. Yes, young boys gave actually a little bit of run for the money in the home game, but then in the end they are better. Leipzig sim similar, yeah, were a little bit struggling against just Giovanna's Vesta, but in the end it was easy. Uh, two one win, the only away win on Tuesday. Uh, that yeah, if the Henrik's uncle will uh, happen, then it got a little bit tighter. But overall, I think those teams were better than the other two. And so it's only for third place in, in his group and for the group win, which is also Manchester City. So those two are cruising uh, through. And you would also say something similar for Group G, but Barca had actually two horror shows against Shakhtar Donetsk. I mean, winning, uh, luckily, uh, in the first game. Yes, where Fermin Lopez was really good, but uh, as soon as Shakhtar scored, 
Uh, it was kind of tight, and now Schachter actually win the reverse 1 0. Fully deserved, so great head of a ski, uh, ski come. But there were more chance chances, and Barcelona did, didn't look right. I never thought that they were threatening in the entire game, and that's a horrible thing to say about the Barcelona side. Porto also do the double over and Antwerp. Anderlecht, I would say. And, and Antwerp. Uh, the first fixture was actually interesting because Antwerp led at that half and then Porto four, uh, score four with a hat trick in there. And then Porto also did it this time around. Uh, you know, it's workman like 2 0 win, Evan Nielsen and Pepe laid on. Yes, that Pepe scoring the goals. So that settles the Tuesday games. Let's go all over on Wednesday because. The, that was crazy. We need to start in Group A. Bayern struggling twice against Galatasaray. Uh, how they got the win in Istanbul is still a little, little bit of, of a mystery because East, uh, Galatasaray should have led at the half. Uh, but you have Harry Kane who puts the chances away. And almost a similar story in their uh, return fixture yeah, yesterday. Galatasaray was very well in the game. Good support, of course, as well because there are many Turks in Munich living uh, in addition. Um, but then you have Harry Kane, who scores twice, and it came late in the 80s, in the 80s, 80s 60s. Yes, Bakambu pulls one back in stoppage time. But that's exactly uh, the, you know, the punch that Bayern needs over. And Kane is actually, I, I would say, the best striker that Bayern Munich had in a long time. And I'm saying this even, or even over Lewandowski, who's more a pure striker. Kane is definitely at another dimension up front. And the calmness that he finishes is absolutely amazing. So yeah, uh, Bayern Munich already group winners. And why they're group winners? Because United, uh, this little boost they got from the first leg when they score through Harry, Harry Maguire and then Onana saves a penalty late on. You thought, yes, this is the turnaround point. No, it was not. And I always felt it will not be the turnaround point for, for them. And similar things happen in this game. I mean, that game was just one of the nuttiest games I've ever seen. First of all, I mean, it was stopped for a long time, so there was a 30-minute stoppage time. And United were cruising. I mean, Hoyland scores two on his return to Copenhagen. Going on three, honestly. I mean, it was all United. And then the red card for Rashford happens. And in this day and age, this is a red card, unfortunately. Yes, uh, it may not look like, like much, I understand it, but it is a red card by the current, by, by the current rules. Cannot really say much about it. Then El Yunusi, he very quickly thereafter, pulls one back. And then Harry Maguire with some, yeah, again, sloppy defending, gets his hands in the way. It's a hands penalty. Gonzalez can equalize just before half time. The game is level. A game that Copenhagen had no business of being in until that red card. And... Yes, it looks ridiculous, but I think Rashford, if he can do a better job there as well. It was not a malicious uh, step, but it was not. In any case, uh, in the second half, and this is again, yes, 10 v 11, but we're talking about United here. A Premier League team. Yes, it has some, some trouble. That should be much better than Copenhagen. Uh, you know, you put it above Copenhagen, they get a penalty. It's another hand, but Bruno Fernandes puts away. Great shot. I mean, you could not have take, taken this better. But I again, uh, complacency comes in. And I don't know why Garnacho has the need to shush the crowd. That ticked me off big time. And it is kind of showing we are too good, we are too good. And then they lose it. Leraguer and Bargi turn it around for Copenhagen for a famous win. United are in serious trouble of getting eliminated from this group. Can already happen in the next round. Group B is all Arsenal right right now. They bounce back from the loss at last with another win over Sevilla. I mean, already in the first game, it was barely a contest, to be honest. And this one was, was even less so. Arsenal just being better. Uh, Saka running wild in defense. Trossard scoring the first one on uh, uh, assist by Saka and the other one, Saka, uh, scores him himself after being set up brilliantly by Martinelli. And PSV actually get themselves very uh, much back in the running. I mean, the earner won one at loss. And yesterday, thanks to Luc de Jong, they beat loss 1-0. So uh, that kind of offsets a little bit the loss win against Arsenal. Um, and puts PSV in a, a good position for advancing. In Group C, uh, Union Berlin had actually two good showings against Napoli, to be honest. Um, Napoli win the first leg on their first shot on goal. 
Uh, this this around the first half was all not Napoli and Agisa goal was uh, called call for offside. I also like the big uh, sign that some Napoli fan put put up with Leonardo da Vinci, um, showing of course Leonardo da Vinci and then Leonardo da Perdi, the losing Leonardo, so the winning Leonardo and the losing Leonardo, of course it's Leonardo Bonucci, I found this hilarious. Um, however, in the second half, it seems like it was, it was still feel Napoli did not get back, and actually with a little bit of luck, uh, could have been more for Union Berlin there as well, who stopped their losing streak? At 13. This was an important one for them. They will not make it. I think still uh, Napoli will advance for, for this group. Uh, Real Madrid have already advanced, but it was also not, not that easy. Uh, had a little bit of luck in the fir first game that they won and 2-1. Two, uh, two this time around also a little bit like Braga was well in the game for the first 15-20 minutes, having good chances, having a penalty that Lunin, who just came on, saved. Uh, but as soon as Brahim Diaz makes his first goal, it was all for Real Madrid and the two Brazilians, Vinicius Junior and Rodrigo, add to their tally. And all done and does it also in Group D. We have um, uh, Real Sociedad completely steamrolling Benfica. Like they did in the first leg, where they only won by a, sol a solitary goal. This time, I mean, the first half hour was, a, was made a nightmare. For ben Benfica, Merino scores in the sixth, Oyarzabal in the eleventh. Then Merino scores again, but you know while the pulling ball over the line, uh, touch touches hand. Uh, Barancea then makes it three 0 and then as a penalty, the Bryce Mendes misses. It was absolute destruction. Rafa Silva pulls one back for Benfica, but it never got got, got close. Salzburg actually acquitted themselves against the Champions League finalists, um, having a chance in the first game. Yes, Inter won deservedly overall, but uh, when it was an equalizer and Inter seemed a little bit complacent, it could have been uh, gone the other way away. It was a little bit un unlucky to lose 2-1. And same thing here. Salzburg actually controlled the game, made a lot of pressure, but the more the game went on, as always, when you have a better team, it's the last few minutes that make the deal difference. And... When Inter can bring on uh, Lautaro Martinez and Nicolo Barella, yeah, that's a difference. And then you give away a stupid hand penalty, Lautaro converts, and Inter through to the next round, as you see here in the table as well. Overall, who are the uh, winners and losers of this match? They could make PSV, Dortmund, Lazio, and Milan, and Inter. Yeah, Aguirre, Rasa, Dan Atletico, you know. Teams that have qualified and find themselves now in a really good position. The losers, of course, are the opponents of these teams, which you see on the other side. Uh, overall, the favorites now are still Manchester City. Big uh, over Bayern Munich. Um, seems seems right. I'm, we have to see about Real Madrid. Uh, Arsenal could get in there as well, but I would always uh, say City ahead of Arsenal. Inter, because they're through a leapfrog Barcelona and you see also the, all the Group F teams are still in, in the running here but we already saw it's really, relative to David PSG and Dortmund still having the upper hand there. The next fixtures there are quite some crucial games I think uh, one that's a few that stick out is of course Feno against Atletico Madrid, Milan against Dor, uh, Dor Dortmund yeah, that's a big one and Barcelona can qualify with a win over Porto and then in the other one, I think it starts and stops with Galatasaray against Manchester United. United can get eliminated right there. Uh, Sevilla PSV, the De Jong der Derby, and then Real Madrid and Napoli. Although with Real Madrid already uh, qualified, it's probably a foregone conclusion there. So yeah. In any case, that was it from me from the Champions League. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!